Welcome to the course of Sports Psychology. I am here, your course instructor, Nadia Yaku. Our today's lecture is about the psychology of sports injury and rehabilitation. The main contents that we will cover in today's lecture include introduction of sports injury, phases to rehabilitation, rehabilitation profiling, incorporating psychological skills into the phases of rehabilitation, then psychological handling of injuries and rehabilitation process. When dealing bad news, delivering bad news, wait for a response. The mind often recovers after the body. Mental visualization can help read ready and its need for return to play. Modifying drills can keep skills sharp. All athletes should set goals during recovery. All these will be the part of today's lecture. Now, introduction of sports injuries. Research has found that athletes who used goal setting imagery and positive self talk recovered faster than athletes who did not use these psychological interventions. When injured athletes use psychological interventions, they experience reduction in stress, pain, state anxiety, and re-injury. Athletes who use psychological interventions show a better adherence to rehabilitation. Further, the majority of sports medicine professionals tend not to incorporate psychological intervention into the rehab program of injured athlete. But the use of psychological techniques in the rehabilitation process will speed up the recovery phase. It is important for sports medicine professionals to be trained to understand and be able to use a wide array of psychological skills and intervention throughout the rehab process. If a sports psychologist is not uh, allowed to intervene during the rehabilitation process from the sports medicine professionals, then it's the responsibility of sports medicine professionals to get trainings in uh, different psychological skills and interventions so that they can improve the rehabilitation process with the help of psychological techniques. Now, there are three phases to rehabilitation, a holistic approach to healing injured athletes with healing. distinct phases of rehabilitation process include phase 1, 2 and 3. Here in phase 1, reaction to injury, athletes to injury including physical and psychological factor. Athlete forms cognitive appraisal of injury occurrence that may be positive or negative and it consumed with the pain it has produced. When an athlete in got injury, he or she will perceive that injury as a positive or negative and this perception will be consumed with the pain that is linked with that injury. If there is some career threatening injury, definitely there will be a negative appraisal or if there is a minor injury, it can result in positive appraisal. Then there is a next phase, phase 2. Reaction to rehabilitation. In the first phase, athlete will show a reaction towards injury. Now, there will be the phase of rehabilitation. So, athlete will show his reaction towards the rehabilitation. Characterized by physical factors of strength, balance and mobility and psychological factors of motivation and hardiness. These will be the core part, core component of this rehabilitation process phase. This phase tends to be most challenging for athletes because it is longest phase for more severe injuries. If there is a severe injury, just like fracture or any um, like ACL, then athlete may be, may be suffer from the, those injuries for the longest duration and rehabilitation process will continue for the months. And that uh, continuation in the process will be more challenging for the athlete as the athlete never want to be on bed for the longer durations. Then there is the third phase, 
reaction to return to play marked physically by completing strength and proprioceptive gains and beginning sport specific agility drills and movements in this phase athletes deal primarily with self confidence issues and managing their fear or re-injury as they approach their return to play because re reaction to return to play this phase starts when the person is recovered fully and the next stage is uh, for him or her to go back to the playground and um, show his or her performance in the field this phase often starts with a loss of confidence in his or her skills the main task the sport of the sport psychologist is to manage his fear and boost his or her confidence in order to get maximum performance from the athlete then rehabilitation profiling what are the main factors that contribute in the rehabilitation process rehabilitation involves assessing both the athlete's personal and physical factors that have an impact on both the time and quality of the rehabilitation process in rehabilitation profiling we will see these both kind of factors personal factors and physical factors that play a significant role in the rehabilitation process this allow sports medicine professionals and athlete to gain a better sense of where athlete rates himself or herself on important factors that impact the rehabilitation process according to these factors sports medicine professional will assess the athlete that where he or she falls for example if an athlete has strongest uh, stronger personal factors uh, he or she has a stronger strength uh, physical health and mental health to manage the condition or he or she is mentally prepared to manage his or her uh, issue that is she, that she is facing and willing to recover sooner she will perform the healing phase with a rapid speed and uh, she can move in the field more faster way as compared to the person who is not willing to move and who is who has less level of physical strength and mental strength uh, to move back toward the playground personal profile include 12 psychological emotional and social factors whereas the physical profile include 12 injury specific and health related factors we will see both of these factors one by one first we will study rehabilitation in rehabilitation profiling the 12 personal factors of rehabilitation profiling the first factor is confidence how much you believe in your ability during the rehab this matters most as if the person is confident uh, has confidence on his self or herself that she will recover soon then this confidence will help to recover uh, to speed the speed up the process of recovery and she will be recovered very soon if that person if athlete do not has confidence on herself or his self about the recovery process then his or her recovery process will go longer the next personal factor is motivation your current level of motivation in rehabilitation matters most if you are most motivated enough to recover you will recover very soon if your motivation for recovery is less then your recovery phase will be longer the next personal phase factor is anxiety physical anxiety you experience regarding your recovery if you are feeling more physical anxiety your recovery will be late if you are feeling less physical anxiety you will be you will recover soon the next is focus degree to which you stay focused on your rehab 
as much as you will be focused on your rehabilitation process you will recover as much earlier expectations is the next person factor positive expectations you have regarding your recovery if you have positive expectation they will be there will be in return positive consequences if you have negative concerns or negative expectations you will not get the positive results the next person factor is worry degree of uneasiness concern and doubt you have about recovery if you are not sure about your recovery you will not recover actually and if you are sure about your recovery you will recover very soon and efficiently then emotions degree you feel emotional about your rehab as much as you are emotional and you want to uh, get rehab uh, you want to get recover and uh, want to return to the playground as um, as soon as you can so you will be recover very soon but if you are not willing and you don't have uh, your emotional level for recovery you will not get recovery phase ended very soon then identity degree you currently view yourself as a physical being and athlete as much as you sustain your physical identity being an athlete you will sustain your physical identity your athletic identity as much will be strengthened you will be an athlete and you will face the condition bravely and you will fight for that and recover very soon the next is adherence degree to which you adhere to your rehab program as much as you adhere to your rehab program your recovery phase will be shorter enough and your recovery will be with high quality the next is understanding degree of understanding you have of the rehab process as much as you have knowledge about the rehabilitation process you will be aware from the steps and you will be confident enough to uh, confident enough for your recovery and you will recover step by step mentally and uh, you will be satisfied from the phases and the la at, at the end you will be more satisfied and more uh, mentally relaxed for the recovery phase as compared if you don't have understanding about the process pain tolerance is the next personal factor degree to which you can tolerate and control pain during rehab as much as you can control your pain you can fight with the situation and your rehabilitation process will be covered soon and your uh, you will fully recover in the shorter period of time the last one personal factor is social support degree of social support you are receiving from others including the sports medicine professionals family friends coaches and teammates it matters most if you are supporting you are getting social support from your peer group your parents your teammates and your professionals sport medicine professionals and coaches you will be more willing to recover and uh, your recovery will be more effective in the shorter time you can see better results now in the rehabilitation profiling what are the 12 physical factors that contribute in the rehabilitation process the first one is range of motion quantity and quality of movement you have in the injured area of the proximal or distal joint what kind of flexibility an injured athlete has in the uh, injured joint or the injured area for example if it can move more or it can have movement only 1 or 2 inches or 1 or 2 feet movement flexibility is there how much is the flexibility is there it 
it depicts the more the flexibility is there the more and quicker chances of recovery for that athlete if there is less movement in the injured area then athlete will be athlete's recovery will be more late then next is the strength amount of force you can generate through injured area how much strength an athlete can generate from the injured area for example if the leg is fractured how much uh, strength is there he or she can lift up his or her leg or not or she can or the athlete can move his legs uh, accurately as he can move the other leg or is there any uh, stiffness in the leg or we can say less quite less movement or inability to move the leg as much as the person is unable to move the leg the longer will be the recovery phase and rehabilitation process will be the longer as compared to the phase when the person is able to move as much as possible the next is, is the stability degree of firmness and straightness you feel in the injured area how much the person is feeling injury how much stiffness is there how much firmness is there if the uh, body muscle or the body part is as much injured that the muscle is broken or the muscle is tear up then injury injuries recovery process will be the slower and if there is only swelling or there is only a um, minor injury then the recovery will be speed up the next is the coordination degree to which you use different muscle groups together to produce a certain movement how much coordination is there among muscles is there is a high coordination between muscles there will be a speedy recovery and if there is less coordination among muscles there will be a late recovery the next is balance degree to which you can maintain equilibrium that is required to the injured area if the person has uh, quite uh, uh, enough balance to maintain his or her weight if there is no enough balance then recovery uh, or rehabilitation process will be the longer as compared to the person who has sufficient balance to maintain his or her body weight the next is swelling amount of fluid in the injured area as much as there is a high flood in the injured area the recovery will be later pain degree of discomfort and soreness you feel in the injured area if there is a high degree of pain and discomfort there will be delayed recovery and if there is a uh, lesser pain or, or discomfort in the and soreness in the injured area recovery will be sooner the next is the function degree to which you can carry out sport related activities involving injured area how much you can perform sport related activities with the help of that injured area for example if there is an ankle injury the athlete is able to perform an uh, the relevant activities or not how much injury is there how much his uh, joint or ankle or body muscle is injured it depends uh, recovery depends on the uh, intensity of the injury if the person is able to perform sport related activities with that injured area then recovery will be speedily if he or she is not able to perform the sports related activities with that injured area then there will be delayed recovery the next is physical factor is daily activities degree to which you can carry out typical daily activities how much you can perform typical daily activities your uh, cloth changing activities your hygiene condition maintenance how much you can perform your daily routine activities if you are able to perform your daily activities 
sufficiently, then there will be speedy recovery. If you are unable to perform your daily routine activities, then delayed recovery can be expected. The next is sports participation, degree to which you can participate in your normal sport activities. How much you are able to perform your normal routine sports activities? If you are able to perform your normal sport activities, then you can you can experience PD recovery. The next is health. The next is health. Degree of your general good health free of fatigue, illness, minor injury. As much as you have good physical health, your recovery phase will be the speed up. And if you have less uh, healthy physical condition, your uh, recovery phase will be delayed. The next is sleep. How much you are sleeping? If you are sleeping enough, your physical body will be re-energized as much as possible and your recovery will be speedily. Incorporating psychological skills into the three phases of rehabilitation, the various psychological techniques, goal setting, imagery, relaxation technique, positive self-talk, social support can be incorporated into three phases of rehabilitation. That is reaction to injury, reaction to rehabilitation and reaction to return to play. All these psychological techniques can be used to manage the reaction to rehabilitation and reaction to return to play. Most of the people do not have positive self-image and positive um, uh, self-confidence about return to play or for the recovery. Their doubts will be managed and their confidence will be built using different psychological techniques that are mentioned here such as goal setting, imagery, relaxation technique, positive self-talk and social support. Now, psychological handling of injuries and rehabilitation. How you, we can handle the clients psychologically. When delivering bad news, wait for a response. If an athlete got injury, how you will explain his uh, in front of him that how much injury is there. When athlete first suffer an injury, it is important to first make sure the athlete understand what their injury is. Make sure that they must be aware from the kind of injury they are facing. Injury information is often filled with complex medical terminology that can be difficult for a child or teenager to understand. Make sure to explain their injury in the simple form as simple as it can be. When this is combined with an intense emotional state, the athlete may have difficulty in paying attention. If there is an intense emotional state just uh, like whipping or sad mood and anger then it can be more uh, there will be more difficulty for tension for paying attention on the given task uh, that's in the form of injury as other people should pay uh, first aid services to the athletes and if there is an emotional state this uh, provision of first aid will be quite difficult to make sure an athlete understands the injury, explain the injury first and wait for a response from the athlete before continuing. You must understand injury first and explain it to the athlete. If the athlete shows some sign of injury, understanding of type of injury, then you should continue. Wait for a response and then go further. This ensures the athlete is paying attention. If athlete responses you, then it means he is paying attention towards you and listening you carefully. Allow the athlete time to digest the news and release any emotions that are bottled up. For example, an athlete may react like with a deep sigh or uh, um, head bending or any other gesture, wait for his response. It is important to support the athlete physically, physiologically and psychologically on their road to recovery. 
remind them that the injury is not their fault and that a return to play is likely. Play a supportive role and ensure them that this injury is not caused by their own fault. And if with the even they are uh, suffering from this injury, they still can move back toward the playground and can perform well just like before. If the athlete is struggling, try having them watch sports on TV to help motivate them further to work hard at the rehabilitation. If the athlete is uh, not satisfied and uh, not feeling easy with his uh, current medical condition or uh, not fit, uh, accepting his injury, help him to watch different sports on the TV to motivate him that you can again, once again, can go back to the playground and can uh, have such kind of performances once again. Now there is how to break bad news. There are steps. Let's watch them. Hi, it's James. Hi, yeah. um, I'm one of the doctors looking after your mother, Caroline James. Oh, nice, nice. Um, I'm Dr. You. Nice to meet you. I've come to update you on her. Do you want to come to a quieter side room? And it's a bit more private, I can talk to you. Yeah, sure. Have you got anyone with you think that's great? Okay, just this way then. Mr. James, can you tell me what you already know about your mother coming to hospital today? Yeah, I brought her in this morning, uh, dropped her off for her uh, to have her thyroid out. Yeah. Um, I just came back to collect her and said I uh, was supposed to meet her in this ward, but uh, the nurses told me she's not come in. Uh, so I'm a little bit worried, I don't know where she is. She doesn't come to this board, but I'm going to tell you where she's going to be. Unfortunately, the operation hasn't gone quite straightforwardly as we'd hoped. Oh, is she okay? There has been a complication, but she's okay. Do you want to tell you what's happened? Yeah, please. So she went to the operation and had a thyroid taken out. And that all happened. But when she was waking up with the anesthetic, she started having some really problems. They're quite serious. Okay, well, what's happening? She had to go back to the operating theatre and she had a tracheostomy. It was very controlled. We had to make an opening from the skin of her neck into a windpipe, which allows the air to go into her lungs. At the moment, though, she's now awake and she's breathing and she's now in tender care. I just. They tell you these things can happen, but. You always expect the best. I can't. But she's doing well now. She's under the best care. We're going to look after her. So, so what, what are you going to do for her? So there is a few steps that we need now to take. The first and most important thing is that we make sure she's stable, she's breathing, and we keep her in IT in the intensive care unit over the next year to look after her. Okay. After we know that she's stable. We need to do some tests. We need to find out why this has happened. So one of those tests could be that we put the camera down her throat, just have a look inside, see if there's been any damage, and can we see what's going on? But once we've got the results, we can call it a more long-term harm. What are we going to do next? And we'll keep looking at it. Do you have any more questions for me? I can't think of anything at the moment. Don't worry. You might go here and think of something. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there so was, there a, was news break. a news break. How a bad news is break toward to the informant of any person. But while you are dealing with the threat, you have to directly break the bad news in front of the threat, and you need to understand his feeling and emotions as much as you can. Now the mind often recovers after the body as, as rehab progresses. It is common for an athlete to be physically ready for competition but not psychologically ready. Most of the time it happens so that physical recovery, physical examination and medical tests uh, make the person clear 
and he is able to uh, go back to his playground for performance but mentally he is not ready for this task for, uh, for the uh, competition this is often due to lack of confidence in the surgical repair if the person is not confident enough for his surgery that's why he or she can have such feelings many athletes become afraid that any stress on the repaired limb will only re-injure it most of the time if there is a surgery the most of the uh, athlete think so if we will use that particular limb that has received surgery recently can uh, result in re-injury it will injure once again if we will use that muscle that's why they're not confident enough to use that muscle. For example, a thread with an ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament injury, are reluctant to make cuts on the field out of fear of tearing the ACL again. They're most of the time, if once they're facing ACL tear then or ACL injury, they will be quite confusing about the usage of their limb for the further times. There are some important points to remember when traversing this gap in recovery. Reassure the athlete that the surgeon took the utmost care when constructing the repair. You, there is a need to reassure them again and again for the proper surgical procedure uh, used for the recovery. And with the help of best and professional surgeons. Remind the athlete that he or she worked hard in rehab and the muscles around the injury are strong enough to withstand competitive play. Make it sure that they are their muscles are strong enough and they can use them once again as they were using them before the injury. It is also important to remind the player that any reluctance regarding the repair will actually increase the risk of injury because it can result in the athlete moving unnaturally and if you're not willing to move accurately you're uh, making confusing movements then it can re-injure once again because you are not uh, moving your limb in the natural way the next there is an uh, athlete who has received ACL injury and after uh, she recovered from the ACL see how the ACL uh, recovery phase is moving on with this athlete. She enjoys sports. She's been playing sports since she was six years old. I was playing basketball. I jumped and landed wrong and tore my ACL. It was a torn ACL. I think going in, we knew that that's probably what the problem was. But just knowing, you know, what you hear about that, it's a long recovery. Is she going to be able to come back and play sports again? Oh, there you go. The most important thing, I think, is making sure they're comfortable with what we're doing. Every athletic trainer is going to feel that way. We want to make sure that they're safe ultimately, and that's why we're there. They said it was going to be six to eight months recovery, and my mindset was, well, I'm going to get back in six months. Motivation, I think, is very important. It's a very tedious process as you rehab an injury because you need to basically rebuild a foundation. There were times in the training where it was really hard and in the back of my head, I knew what I was working for and I knew that the end payoff would be worth it. So I just pushed through it. As you get weeks, months out, making sure that she can get her full range of motion back, get her full extension back. She's got to have that confidence or else she's not going to be able to play her game. She was right around that six month mark when they cleared her that allowed her to come back to the playing field for soccer. I was really nervous, honestly, just to make sure I wasn't going to do anything to get hurt again but I knew I was strong enough physically and I my doctors wouldn't put me back out there if they didn't know I could fully do it. She was able to play in the regional semifinal game and she scored three goals in that game. It was a hat trick in soccer and that was just awesome. It just hasn't slowed her down. She's become stronger I believe because of the injury and come out further ahead had it not happened. Hmm. 
The next is mental visualization can help ready an athlete for a turn to play. Mental visualization is the second name of imagery we have studied in the previous lectures. If an athlete is uh, suffering from severe injury or he or she is on bed and cannot move to the uh, playground for the practice, there is a need to practice visualization or play the game in his or her mind. So, uh, she, her uh, daily routine practices should continue in his mind and when she or he will be back to the playground, there will be no issues, there will be no confusions and doubts that can play a role of hindrance in the performance. When athletes are getting emotionally and psychologically ready to re-enter the competitive arena, practicing encouraging imagery is a powerful technique. It is used to remind athletes of what they need to do once they return to play. It's basically remind, uh, play a role of a reminder Using imagery, athletes can visualize themselves going through the rehab exercises in their mind. They can also picture themselves performing different drills, plays, techniques and strategies to sharpen their skills before returning to play. If athletes can adequately picture themselves going through important steps in their mind, they will grow their confidence during rehab and surgical repair. Positive visualization can help any athlete overcome the fears of re-injury. If they can, uh, if the athletes uh, practice positive visualization or positive things in imagery, they can help themselves to overcome the fear of re-injury that often athletes have once they receive an injury. Here is an example video that how mental visualization help an athlete. Let's watch it. How mental visualization help this athlete. How does visualization help with that? It is everything for me. How so? So if, I, if you're going to play a, an overseas tour, say to Australia or England or something like that, I literally sat down two, three months before and I've made a decision in my head that I'm going to take their best bowler on. And when I train in the gym, when I'm practicing, regularly there are visuals running in my head, me dominating that bowler. When I train, I have music on, I'm putting myself in a situation where that guy is bringing the heat onto me and I'm countering that. And, you know, that becomes such a reality in your head. And invariably, when I went into that situation, I ended up dominating that guy in their own home conditions. And what specifically are you seeing when you're visualizing? <clears throat> um, I'm actually seeing smashing that bowler all over the field. So I, I actually feel that emotion in my heart and I can feel that this is going to happen. And you, you tune your head or you tune your mind in a way that it's so convincing in your mind that when you're in that situation, your body just takes over because it's already already registered in your mind. And when that happens, you feel like, oh man, this is so powerful. Because if something looks difficult and if you don't convince yourself to go out there and achieve the opposite, you're never going to be able to do it. You can't just land in a place and say, I'll see what happens. That way you, your chances of succeeding become very, very low. Now, modifying drills can keep skills sharp. Modifying sport-specific drills or techniques during rehab is another strategy for instilling confidence in an athlete after an injury. If an athlete is unable to perform his or her routine practice with the full enthusiasm and using a full muscle, full body muscles, then we need to modify the modify the drills and. Another technique can be used, for example, if a basketballer is unable to walk due to leg injury, then we will uh, help him to throw the ball while sitting on the wheelchair and throw the ball in the basket with the help of his arms. This will help to uh, ensure his ability to make goals in the 
in his game as he is practicing in the real time a surgical repair often limits an athlete physically as the repair is give, given weeks or even months to heal after the surgery this can make it challenging for athlete to keep skills sharp for their respective sports to help these skills modify the reels in a way that the athlete can perform them even when immobilized as i have uh, mentioned an example of the basketballer you can use such alternative options for other games also for example if a football player cannot run due to a knee injury they can practice throwing from a seated or kneeling position for example basketball players can still shoot from their knees and baseball players can practice hitting with a soft toes or even practice grips in their hands giving athletes reels they can perform while recovering will make them more likely to push themselves and give them the confidence necessary to return to play the last option all athletes should set goals during recovery in the recovery phase this is the most important part anyone working with an injured player should make sure to set goals these include goals related to recovery return to competition and goals once competition play has resumed write these goals on a piece of paper or whiteboard and place the goals in an area the athlete can see while in rehabilitation keep athletes from thinking in a negative manner by pushing them to reach the positive goals listed keeping these goals in mind will prevent athletes from focusing on the physical limitations related to their surgical repair exactly if they are uh, reading again and again their goals they will uh, they will forget about the physical injury they are having and they will focus on the goals they are reading managing an athlete's psychology after an injury and during rehab is key for successful recovery it is important to remember that although their injury may be healed their athletic mindset may still be hurting build their confidence while guiding them on the path to a successful recovery and return to the field this is the responsibility of the psychologist to manage their doubts and set goals for recovery if a psychologist succeeded in managing their doubts and achieve the goals set during the recovery phase athletes can promote their performances even during the recovery phase so here are all the topics that we have studied under the heading of psychology of sports injury and rehabilitation process if you have any queries or any kind of feedback you may contact on the given email address thank you for your attention thank you very much